Gaming on Mac has always been a struggle, but with Apple making some moves in gaming direction that might change. There is now a new way of gaming on Mac, so I gotta use Mac Mini to see how good it is. And I say I got some shocking results. Hit the like button and let's start. What I have here is the cheapest Mac Mini from 2020 with an M1 chip and 8GB of RAM. You can get it for under $400 used and I would say it's a pretty nice value. In 2020, Apple started making Mac Minis unupgradable so there is no point in getting inside. At max you can remove the bottom cover and wipe the dust from the cooling openings. That's where the intake is so it's good to do this once in a while. Let's power it up. It started with no problems and after a quick setup I'm in the system. I saw the software update available which is the new macOS Sequoia, so I upgraded right away. The new system promises to be more optimized for gaming which is great. You can even see the new Frostpunk game in the pictures. So after all the updates are done, let's try the first way of gaming, which is just trying out games that support macOS. I installed Steam for Mac, there is a Mac version, and in Steam you have an Apple logo over the button if the game is available for Mac. Alternatively, you can even get some games right from the App Store, which is nice. Speaking of game, library, I say there are some popular and good games available for Mac, but compared to Windows it's still a small fraction. Anyway, I downloaded several games, so let's see how they perform. In the recently released Frostpunk 2 with textures on high and everything else on low settings, in 1080p I got pretty much playable 50 plus FPS. Overall the game feels very playable. By the way, check out the FPS counter. We can finally easily track performance on Mac. You can enable it with the command in the terminal. Moving on to some something even more demanding in the Resident Evil Village with the auto set low medium settings, in native 1080p I got stable 40 to 45 fps. It's surprising how good the game is ported and shows the potential of the M1 chip. I then enabled the Metal FX which is Apple's upscaling tech kinda like DLSS and FSR. And with the quality mode I got 60 plus fps most of the time. The image quality is still pretty good and the game feels a lot smoother. Let's test some more games. in. Valheim I played with the settings a bit and the best result I got is around 50 fps with the native 1080p resolution and the aliasing and the rest on low. The game runs pretty smooth and with the good image quality. In Stray with the low settings 1080p our Mac Mini gets a stable 30 to 40 fps range most of the time. So overall I can't say anything bad about the gaming experience. All the games are running with playable fps and looking pretty good. But of course you are limited to the games that support Mac OS, which a lot of times means that you can't play the new games right away and have to wait until the port is out, if there is one. That brings us to the second new way to play games on Mac. About a year ago, Apple introduced a game porting toolkit. They have version 2 already and it is a software that allows you to run Windows games on Mac. I set it up with the help of the free app called Whiskey, which is basically a visual interface for the game porting toolkit. All you have to do is download Whiskey from the website, follow the installation steps and once you have it open, click create bottle. Give it a name, select Windows version, I'm gonna go with Windows 11, wait until it's created and that's it. You can now run Windows app installers and it would be installed on this C drive. Let's install Steam again, but now we need a Windows version. Go through the installation step, you can see the C drive path and once installed the icon will appear in Whiskey. Sometimes though you'll need to restart Whiskey or pin it manually. So now I have the Windows version of Steam and all Windows games available on my Mac. Of course there are still limitations, for example most competitive online games will not run because of the anti-cheat. Or some games are not optimized well enough. Whiskey app has great documentation with a game support list which was very helpful. And it is open source if you like to contribute. I installed several games to try, so let's see. In CS2 with the low settings and FSR in performance mode I got around 40 FPS, but it's not really playable with such unstable frame time. Not a good start, but let's move on. Elden Ring with low preset 1080p, surprisingly playable around 30 fps. This game runs pretty well, in a loaded scene you can see fps goes under 30, but thanks to relatively stable frame time it feels smooth. Another surprise, the Mac Mini is completely silent. I tested many PCs and even though this one has a fan, I think that is the quietest of all. Let's try even more demanding game, in Cyberpunk with lowest settings and FSR in ultra performance mode, I got around 25 fps. 
Paradise, but it freezes a lot so it's not really playable. This game has platinum status in whiskey documentation, so this probably would run better on a more powerful Mac. In Days Gone, I got around 35 FPS with low settings 1080p, but with freezes. I even tried it with a 900p resolution. And it is more playable that way, but I wouldn't call it smooth. So far, I'm very impressed with this. I think running Windows games on Mac is a very nice breakthrough for Mac gaming enthusiasts. Of course, it doesn't take off all limits. Spider-Man, Miles Morales and Project Castaway, for example, didn't make it through cutscene. God of War game makes Mac Mini restart, so it takes some testing. I am of course using pretty much the wicked silicon Mac Mini with M1 and 8GB of RAM, so it can be a different story on a more powerful MacBooks and Mac Mini. But there are also a lot of new games that are relatively low demanding and thanks to this new method are now playable on Mac. In Little Nightmares 2 with medium settings, I got stable at around 55 FPS. The game feels pretty good and responsive. Supermarket Simulator runs with 100 plus FPS on high settings. Checking some new games in Zoo Choices with low preset and DLSS in balanced mode, I got 60 FPS. And Squirrel with the gun on low settings 1080p runs at around 65 FPS with some raises even to 80 sometimes. So even with the budget Mac Mini M1, you can get your hands on some new games. Besides the Whiskey app, there is also a crossover app that has been around for a long time already. This one is not free, you can see the pricing on your screen, but there is a free 14 days trial version available which I tested to see if it's any better. The steps are very similar, click try now, it asks for your name and email, and after that the download starts. Then unzip the file, go to downloads, and move crossover app to the applications folder. In the crossover app, I click install Steam, and it created Windows 10 bottle automatically, and install it on a C drive. You can see the crossover and whiskey has a similar interface, but the crossover app seems more advanced. There are different settings, crossover supports the game porting toolkit as well, you can see it toggled right now, but it also has its own compatibility layer called DXVK, which might be better in some cases. There is also a settings for controller, ethernet, and it even has a task manager. That design brings some memories. So I installed a couple of games with crossover and ran them in different modes. In Elden Ring with low preset 1080p, crossover performs very similarly to the Whiskey app, with Whiskey getting a bit more FPS and slightly better frame time. In Little Nightmares 2 with high preset, very similar situation. The game started with DXVK mode, but it is unstable, often goes to the black screen. In Deep Rock Galactic, I got the same placement, this game runs in all modes, DXVK mode is the most laggy one here, the D3D mail works well, but you can see the Whiskey app has a more stable frame time graph with a bit more FPS. From my quick testing in a couple of games, I got the best results with the Whiskey app, so I will call it a winner here. But it's all trial and error, and in some cases maybe crossover will be a better choice. I think if you are using a Mac OS right now, it is definitely worth trying it out. The setup steps are fairly easy, and I think in many cases you will get your playable FPS. Let me know what you think about it, I'll leave all useful links in the description, and I'll see you in the next video.